Hello. Hi. This guy wanted to say hello to you guys. Anything else? Uh, bye. Okay. All right, close the door. Okay. See you later. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I had all these different things swirling around in my brain that I wanted to share with you this morning. And then I got a message from one of you and all that kind of changed. So um, we were talking about just God loving us through the little things. And um, it got me thinking. So when Brian and I first met, he, what, he had become a believer in his adulthood, and his path to the Lord was, um, so his mother was a Christian. I always, I always say, mothers pray you into the kingdom. <laughs> and so um, she, and she and her siblings would like get on the phone and have these mega prayer sessions. So he, he said, God, if you're true, give me a burning bush. God, if you're true, give me a burning bush. And then he came to this point where he was like, who am I to require that of the Lord for him to prove himself. He's already done it in a million different ways. And just in his bedroom on a quiet, you know, evening one night, he, um, he invited the Lord into his heart in humility and the rest is history. Um, and so this conversation kind of reminded me of that. And it got me thinking how often we feel like I need, I need a burning bush. I need a breakthrough. I need this huge, massive thing to come into my life. Um, when, as I look back on the moments of my life, it's the little tiny things strung together that make our union with God, that make our relationship, you know, thinking of it like a marriage, that make our marriage to the Lord, right? And with our spouses too, um, there's, the, there's the grand gestures. Those are great once a year, once every, you know, once every six months, whatever the thing is. But how sweet are those moments of, hey, I went to Starbucks and I grabbed you your favorite drink. Or, um, you know, I took care of the dishes even though I really just wanted to lay on the couch. Those little things strung together are what make a relationship. And, um, and so my invitation to you guys is to look for those little things and to go freaking crazy when you get them. Because that fortifies our faith and that restores the tenderness with the Lord. Especially in these little years where... Um, for those of you that are in little years or big years or whatever the years may be, sometimes there ain't no time for the big miracles, right? Or if they came, we'd miss them because we were so buried in all the things. And so um, I pulled out Jonah as just an example um, where God, in this book, and look, in my Bible, this is Jonah. This is the whole of the thing. It's not even two full pages. Um, in this book, he, ha he is given a commission from on high. He disobeys and suffers through this massive storm of tumult and chaos. He goes down into the depths of the ocean and is swallowed by a fish. He's spit out on dry land, and then he goes and fulfills the commission that he was given. And thousands of people, including the king, come to the Lord. Okay? So all the, it's like big thing, big thing, big thing, big thing, big thing. And then we get this thing where he is... Um, He's weary, and he's like, just kill me, okay? Jonah does not show himself in his best light throughout this book, which I kind of love, right? Um, just kill me. And um, God's like, do you have any reason to be angry? Um, and he doesn't answer him. And then, um, and then God, God appointed a plant, and it grew up over Jonah to be a shade over his head to deliver him from his discomfort. And Jonah was extremely happy about the plant. Then the next day, God sends a worm, and the worm eats the plant, or the Lord, the worm makes the plant fall down, uh, attack the plant, and it withered. Okay, and now he's got, now he's sitting in the sun, and he's like, "Just kill me." And then God said, "You have good reason to be angry with the plant." And now Jonah answers, "I have good reason to be angry, even to death." And the Lord talks about, "You had compassion on this plant, but you won't have compassion on your enemies." And da 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 da. Um, you gotta love when you're figuring out what's wrong with your face on camera. <laughs> At least it's just us. Okay, so um, so here, big thing, big thing, big thing, tiny little thing. God's tenderness to him and giving him the plant. God's tenderness to him in taking the plant to reveal Jonah's heart and to work through all the things, okay? And we don't get the resolution of all this, but we assume that because this book is in the canon, the Lord God Most High, uh, Jonah probably figured it out with God, right? There was probably a path forward. But I just invite you guys today to, to not only look for those tender moments, but to ask for them, okay? Um, Derek Prince um, is the grandfather of our, of our pastor, 
And he said to he said to his grandson, "Be very specific in your prayers." If you don't know who Derek Prince is, he's this awesome theologian. He's got such great stuff, so he's worth checking out. Just really, he's British, so he's fun to listen to, and you can just do the deep dive in him unpacking the scriptures. Um, so I used to when I was when I was a lawyer, I would pump for Cora um, at the law firm and listen to Derek Prince. <laughs> That was how I spent my pumping time because you're supposed to be relaxed, so you're not supposed to be working. So anyway, it's kind of funny. Um, I'm sure you really wanted to know that. Okay, so um, specific prayers. Ask for, you know, throw a fleece, right? That's that idea of like, if you're looking for an answer to a question, say, Lord, let it be this way if you want, if, you know, if I'm supposed to do that and let it be this way if I'm supposed to do that. Okay, we've thrown a fleece in something in our lives recently. Okay, um, do ask for something really specific. You know, Lord, could you, I'm really hot. Could you send a breeze? I'm really, I'm really tired. Could you open up some space for me to have rest? I'm really nervous about this meeting. Could you give me peace? These little things, when we come to him with the specific moments of our days, he becomes real to us in a way that we've never had before. And especially when we're raising our small people. Like one of the things that my, that my kids learned to pray for first was help from God to find things when it when they were lost. Because I didn't have margin with four kids running around. Everybody's always losing something. I like, ask Jesus. Don't ask me anymore where your sacks are. Ask Jesus. And then when he shows up and he shows them to our children, we go crazy. Oh my gosh, Jesus, thank you so much. This is the most amazing thing. Okay, um, that praise fortifies us, okay? We say we might say to ourselves, oh, it's silly to bother him with that stuff. Don't you think the dude that made so many stars that we can't even see them with our telescopes? Like there's all this mess of galaxies beyond the galaxies, beyond the galaxies that we can even see. And he made that for fun, okay? For his glory and his good pleasure. And we can't even, no one's seen them but him and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, okay? And here we are going, I don't think I should bother him about finding those shoes. It's not big enough. Honey, he can handle it. And when he does and you receive it, when he does and you receive it and he becomes that more real to you, don't you think, don't you think that Jonah had some little things before all the big stuff? Don't you think that he had year over year over year of plants and fields? Don't you think he had year over year over year of the peace of God that passes understanding, fortifying his life, the words to speak that he couldn't even understand or comprehend. He didn't even know what he was going to be called to say until he opened his mouth. Don't you think that he was fortified in the Lord before he goes out and preaches and transforms the lives of thousands? And this dude isn't even like the poster child for how to show up awesome for God, right? And yet look how the Lord used him. So, so allow him to fortify you in those tiny little measures go crazy about it and then let that become like the stone the foundation stones for your ministry and if you're and we talk about deep and wide a lot i'm really obsessed with this idea your ministry right now may be to those small people that you are raising okay those people in your home that may be 99.9 .9 of what you're doing don't tell me that's not ministry you're raising up souls to the kingdom of God. That's why I'm here, to help you raise up souls to the kingdom of God, okay? Um, don't tell me that that's not ministry, okay? And then you'll have that little 1% or that 0.1% that's your wide. A smile to the girl in the grocery store who's got her hands full too. Um, a word of encouragement to somebody whose eyes look a little bit downcast. Um, a, a aptly spoken bit of uh, exhortation to somebody that's starting to go off, right? These these things come out when your foundation is strong and your foundation is strong by a relationship built on the tiny little moments, okay? So let him sow into your life in the littlest of ways. Let him grow the plant over your head for shade. Let him destroy the plant to expose something in your life that needs to be healed and bring it all to him and go, thank you. Or what do I do with this? Or what's next? Or what are we supposed to have for lunch? There's no more peanut butter. Whatever the thing is, bring it to him that he might fortify your faith because it's through a fortified faith that we're able to engage with the mountaintops, the great commissions, all the big, okay? It's kind of like we talked about uh, like a week ago, that idea of, oh my gosh, if, I get, if, if he calls me to more, it's gonna be terrifying. 
It ain't gonna be so terrifying or so big if you've let him lay those stones along the path. So you'll just, you, you, you walk into the next season instead of this grand catapult, okay? How gentle he is to do that for us. That's today, y'all. Blessings. I'm here. Talk to me. What's a little thing that he's done in your life that's given you riches? What's a little thing that in some ways feels more miraculous than all the big tied up together? What's a little thing that has proven to you, he is Lord God Almighty and he loves me and he sees me, okay? I can't wait to hear from you guys. Mwah.